Oh, hello. Welcome to the 2013 Hundy Challenge. Today we're going to be discussing 27 Dresses by Hellman's Mayonnaise. This year I'm going to be reading 100 books. At least that's the intent. And I couldn't be more delighted to have started with Catch-22. This is one of the best books I've ever read. And even better, it's written in a foreign language, and one that I happen to be fluent in, which is United States Army. This is also one of the most compellingly real representations of the Army that I've ever seen in any form. Film, book, song, crochet, scrimshaw. This is one of the best. Because it manages to capture simultaneously uh, the insanity of the bureaucracy and the camaraderie of the people who are trapped by it. And even though some of the characters are complete assholes, like Milo, they're still friends with the main character, which is Yosari, and they don't, they don't hold it against one another. And what you'll find when you're in the army is that uh, you're just going to end up being friends with assholes. It just happens. Uh, let's talk about Major Major for a second. Uh, I knew a commander, a major as a matter of fact, who you could have mistaken for Major Major. He just hid out, didn't want to be around, didn't want to have anything to do with his men. Um, that's just one example of the kind of characters that you'll find in Catch-22, but it, it runs this whole gamut of characters that sound insane, I suspect it sounds insane, to people who have never been in the army, but when you are a vet, you'll find that you've encountered all of these people. I worked with someone who you would be the striking image of Chief White Half Oat. I've, I already said I worked with a major major. You know, we all think of ourselves as Yosarians. Uh, that's one of the things, uh, what this reminded me of was M.A.S.H. And uh, as irritating as Hawkeye could get, you know that you always want to think of yourself as the Hawkeye character, or in this case, the Yosarian character, the sole voice of reason in a world of insane bureaucracy. Uh, there's one point I want to touch on, which I thought was incredible, which, which captured... Uh, something really fundamental about the army and, and the bureaucracy therein. Um, a lot of these characters existed solely to justify their own existence. Noticeably was uh, General Peckham, who I think was probably either one letter off from being General Pecker, or maybe he was originally General Pecker, and uh, the editors or the, the publishers made Heller change the name. That's my guess anyway. I, I don't know. Um, one of the things I'm doing specifically with this challenge is not to read too much of the uh, the extraneous stuff in the books. So there's all this, uh, uh, all these essays and uh, analyses of Catch-22, and and I don't have time for that shit. I'm trying to read a hundred books this year. I, I I'm not going to be reading all of the introductions and the you know uh, Christopher Buckley's introduction and all that. I, I'm not worrying about that. I'm not counting that. Um, but that being said, uh, I did not really do a whole lot of research on Catch-22. I'm glad I didn't. I'm, I'm sad I hadn't read it up until now, but I'm glad I waited until after my military experience because I don't think I would have appreciated this as much when I was a teenager. But getting back to my original point, this General Peckham exists solely to justify his own existence, and he makes up... Uh, this concept called uh, bomb patterns. And there's no such thing as a bomb pattern. It's just solely something that General Peckham made up. And then he insisted that all of the people under his command in Yosarian's wing and, and all throughout the Mediterranean theater of World War II would concentrate on how tightly packed their bombs were when they hit the target, which bore no relevance on the war. And in fact, it was counter it was not helpful it was contrary to the war effort they were trying to bomb a village which was also an insane thing to do but they were trying to bomb a village and it would have had to had a, a spread out bomb pattern but the colonel 
in charge said, no, we have to have a tight bomb pattern because that's what General Peckham wants, even though there's no such thing. It's just purely this general, this high up officer who's trying to justify his own existence. And if you've ever been in the army, you know that about half of the officers – now this has been ruined because my phone just went off. Now I'm going to have to start this whole thing over again. But you know that half the officers in the army – and not to shit on enlisted men, because there's plenty of useless enlisted men. You ever met a sergeant major before? Has he ever done anything valuable for you? But anyway, I, I thought that really, in a, in a nutshell, encapsulated the verisimilitude of Catch-22, as opposed to the reality of it. It really captured what it's like to be in the army, while still simultaneously being all kinds of ironic and ridiculous. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Next time we're going to be covering Brave New World, and we're going to work our way through all, hopefully, 100 classic novels this year. Thanks for tuning in.